My name is Linda Ferguson, and I am a docent at the Meadows Museum. Welcome to Tiny Tours. It is my privilege today to introduce you to Francisco Goya's Yard with Mad Men. This is a small, 17 by 13 inches, but dramatic painting. Notice the lower two-thirds of its picture plane is filled with muted, monochromatic earth tones depicting 13 figures inhabiting a dim, walled yard. They are cut off from the radiant, almost blinding silver light above. Through the murk, the light illuminates the muscled back of the naked man in the center. As he fights another naked man, a guard whips him to separate them. Behind them, a man wearing only a shirt crawls on all fours. In the foreground, a man on the left stands with folded arms. The man on the right sits clutching his knees. Both stare vacantly at the viewer. In the deepest gloom, a few inmates cluster against the right wall. Just behind the guard, a long-haired man stands erect. He is profiled against the light gray barred gateway and flanked by two huddled men. Facing the viewer, he gesticulates with arms aloft. Above, the two walls intersect, forming a shallow V against the light, a V that seems to point down to that man who literally stands out and the first fighter. This mysterious and disturbing scene is not what most artists probably would choose to paint, but Goya was not most artists. He lived from 1746 to 1828, a tumultuous era, which spanned the Enlightenment, the French Revolution, the Napoleonic Wars, and the early Romantic period. He was a provincial artisan's son, and a man of the people who had risen up to become first court painter. In that capacity, he usually painted royalty, nobility, the intelligentsia, the rich and famous, and he painted subjects that interested him. He painted Yard with Mad Men in early 1794. His letters show that for much of 1793, he had suffered a terrible illness. Though he recovered from most symptoms, he lost his hearing permanently. While recuperating, he painted 12 small cabinet paintings on identically sized pieces of tin. For once free of commissions and royal obligations, he had set out to explore caprices, caprichos, imaginary subjects from his own fantasy and imagination. Six were bullfight scenes, but the others were dark explorations. A stagecoach robbery, a shipwreck, a fire at night, a sinister group of strolling players, a prison, and a yard with madmen. He sent the first 11 to the Royal Art Academy for assessment. On January 7, 1794, he wrote his Academy contact saying that he had begun the last painting. Quote, A courtyard of lunatics, Corral con locos two of whom are fighting nude with their overseer beating them, and the others wearing sacks. It is a scene which I witnessed in Saragossa. For his final cabinet painting, he had revisited his own specific memory. Also by 1793, turmoil in nearby by France had reached a fever pitch. In 1793, Louis XVI, first cousin to Spain's king, and later Marie Antoinette, were guillotined. By autumn, the reign of terror had begun. Now look at the painting again. Note the light and peace above, and the darkness and turmoil below. The inmates can see the light, but are shut off from it. Note some figures behave like animals, without reason, while others seem in stasis. Is the prominent gesticulating man trying to communicate something? If so, what? Think of the cacophonous sounds Goya might have heard when he had visited, but no longer can. And where is Goya? 
When he was there, he may have been walking on the walls with the Sunday strollers and observing Los Locos Furiosos below. Here, his viewpoint is from down in the yard with the madmen. And so is ours. So many questions from one small painting. I hope you will return to explore it and ask questions of your own. And thank you for listening. Please tune in to the next Tiny Tour.